That's right. How is it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the TLC 2016 Review Podcast on the Hold Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian-based WWE podcast that talks about anything in the WWE, reviews, predictions, everything like that, and we have no holds barred on anything we say, pun intended. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at no holds barred WP, and you can check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Spreaker. We are everywhere for your enjoyment, ladies and gentlemen, everywhere it's easier and convenient for you to listen to us. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and I'm always continuing to be joined by my corporate co-host, and now in the review, Corporate Cappy, the blissful boss and newly <laughs> champed. I am blissful very boss. blissful. I had to stay for the review for this. He's not blissed off. He is blissful. Ladies and gentlemen, very. you heard it you heard here first. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, TLC, uh, actually a pretty good pay-per-view. I think they did a really good job uh, utilizing the gimmick of TLC. Um, yeah, way better than what Hell in a Cell did. Yeah. You can't have TLC like Hell in a Cell. Hell in a Cell, it's its own thing. That means every match has to be in Hell in a Cell. TLC, there's three different elements into one thing. TLC, tables, yeah. ladders, and chairs. And they spread them out with the chairs. They had a tables match, and they also had a ladder match. And they had the final conclusion with all three in the same match, the main event with the TLC match. So I think they did a good job. I think it was a pretty good pay-per-view, to be honest. Yeah? Yeah. Um, I liked it a lot better, and I liked Hell in a Cell. The the pre-show match we were wrong on. Well, I was oh wrong. My I, God. Guess, I guess Naomi and no, Natalia. It was worse. It was <laughs> like a, Mojo Rawley God. with uh, – or the Hype Bro, sorry, with American Alpha and Apollo Crews. Yeah, okay, Apollo he woke Crews up. Sighting. We got Apollo Crews. We have a sighting, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, yes, we heard that right. Apollo Crews has been sighted in the pre-show <laughs> of TLC. Oh, fuck. <laughs> and they uh, faced to get off against the Ascension – the Vaud Villains and Kurt Hawkins. Wow. Yeah, are they going to. St- are they doing an Apollo Crews? Please tell me they're not doing an Apollo Crews Kurt Hawkins feud. I swear <laughs> to fucking Christ. That's just going to ruin SmackDown every week. It's going to be awful. And the winners were obviously Hype Bros, AA, yeah. and. Neat. Great. Cruz. I mean, la- well, last year's TLC match was what? Your girl, Sasha. Remember that? Well, she was yeah. still part of Team Bad. Yeah, and it was in Boston, and she beat Becky. Wow. With the help from Team Bad, it was great. What? So comparing like last year's pre-show to this year's, which was better? <laughs> uh, last year, I, ah, I don't know. They again, they they kind of buried Sasha last year. They put her in the pre-show, and they could have at least made that in the first Boston match of the too. Night. She got a huge pop too to yeah. open the she show. She had a bigger pop. There are still more people in the arena. There's only half people in the arena. <laughs> but yeah, I don't even remember how this match ended. Oh yeah, AA won with uh, what do they call it? Uh, Grand Amplitude. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a weird finisher name, but it's really sick. Yep. Um, so we get into the main card, and we started off with Bray Wyatt, Randy Orton, facing Rhino and Slater for the WWE SmackDown Tag Team Championships. I want to point something out that Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt were getting cheered more than Heath Slater and Rhino in this match. God. Like, they were getting, like, people were cheering for Orton and Wyatt. I think it's just people wanted to see uh, Bray, Bray Wyatt, Wyatt finally win the title. Win the title. Was, this was a less casual crowd. This is a more... Hardcore fans and casuals, for sure, I definitely thought. Yeah. Um, um, the match itself, it did go, like, 15 minutes. Wow. Not much happened. It was basically Heath Slater getting dominated for most of the match, and when Rhino was in there, he looked strong. But, um, yeah, the ending of the match came when... Um, God, I'm trying to remember now. I'm yeah. just, like... Lo- I, 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 I didn't get to see it, ladies and gentlemen. I was still on my way back from corporate hockey. <laughs> I'm still, like, just completely, like, lost over what happened in that mm-hmm. women's match. But... I believe Rhino was about to go for a gore on... Yeah, that's what it was. He was going for a gore on Bray Wyatt, and Wyatt did his little spider pose. God. And, like, it, like, traumatized him, and he just stood there, and then Orton came in out of nowhere and gave him an RKO. Wow. And pinned him for the win. Wow. What a what a way to end... I mean, they didn't... You, they, you can't look at them as a, legit, as a legit reign anyway. They fucking defended it once. Against the Ascension. Their title reign. And barely promoted the tag team titles. They like, didn't do anything. Like, they didn't even have a promo with the Wyatts or anything. Yeah. And congrats on Bray for finally winning. The pop that Bray Wyatt got when he finally held a title. God. The, his first major championship in WWE. Yeah. He didn't, have, he didn't have one when he was Husky Harris. Didn't have one when he debuted as Bray Wyatt. <laughs> Never got one through his single runs either. No. And um, it was symbolic because Luke Harper handed them both the titles 
and then they both put each title on Luke Harper's shoulder after. Uh, so I don't know what that I don't means. Know what that's about? But <laughs> we'll have to see. Um, as for Slater and Rhino, they're going to get the rematch and lose, and then I don't yeah. know where they're going to well, go. I don't even know if they're going to. They're probably get the rematch on SmackDown because now yeah. we're, we're like six, seven weeks away from the Royal Rumble, so there's a lot they can do. We know we got the the Christmas episodes coming up, so we'll see what happens. Um, I'm going to match number two. I'm actually upset I missed this too because I was still on my way back from hockey. Um, I um, I missed Nikki Bella versus Carmella in an ODQ match. Um, I heard I, from what I read on Twitter, it was a pretty good match. It was. It, it was what you expected from the two, like brawling outside the ring. Yeah. Um, just typical Carmella Nikki Bella spots. I didn't um, like the ending. I saw the ending a video yeah. of the ending. I'm like, are you fucking Nikki kidding Bella me? got. A, oh my god! A, a fire, fire extinguisher spider. and just started spraying Carmella with it. What the fuck is it. that? Are you really going to end the feud this way? I hope they continue it because that's just garbage. You can't end the feud in the match that way. That's just pathetic. They got a couple weapons, though, but God. nothing major like kendo stick and whatever. I don't but. even care if I went with my corporate pick there. That's fucking bullshit. I'm pissed at that. <laughs> Carmella should have won, man. Carmella, does, like, she's good, now hasn't... She's 0-5 at pay-per-views so far. She's going to have, what, the Undertaker streak of losing pay-per-views? <laughs> like Bray Wyatt? Yeah. <laughs> God. The new Bray Wyatt. Hey, streak. not anymore. Hey, yeah. he, he finally got a pay per view win. And he's passing it the, the torch on to Carmella now. I guess. But like, I think Carmella could have used a win here to like boost her up. Mm. Like getting an established win over someone like Nikki Bella would have yeah. really helped her. Yeah. And then after the match, Carmella gets on the mic and's like, "Hey, hey, cut her music." And then she's like, "You know what, Nikki? I'm not the one who attacked you at Survivor Series. It was your friend Natalia from Total Divas." <laughs> Great, man. It's fantastic. Oh, my God. And then they have a backstage segment afterwards with oh, Natalia, Natalia. And it was cringeworthy. Cringeworthy. She needs to get off the... She needs to go to Raw. I tweeted it out. I hope Raw. She can take fucking her and her stupid goddamn cat two paws. Get the fuck over to Raw. Just stay <laughs> off SmackDown. You just, just cringe on SmackDown. You don't want to see her anymore on SmackDown. She's not... She has nowhere to be. If you guys watch the Sunday Night Heat episode, you'll, you'll know she's part of one of my trades. Um, Trader for Alicia Fox, for God's sake. <laughs> you'll see. You'll listen to my Sunday heel. You'll, you'll see. You'll agree with me. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm afraid. I guess I'm I'm happy and I'm not happy that I missed that match, but whatever. Um, get into the third match Miz versus Dolph Ziggler in a ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship. Um, actually, a pretty decent match. Um, I expected it to be, I mean, it was a really big expectation it to be one of those historic ladder matches. It was okay. At this point, it was slowly getting to match of the night but it wasn't they, there there was more expectations out of this match it was I just think. it was a long match yeah it dragged too long there was a lot of spots where i wish they could have done and they didn't and it just uh, it didn't look like it, there was as much effort into it as i thought there was going to be yeah i think we we thought it was going to be match of the yeah. night quality but it was pr- it was that. good enough for what it was and the miz uh, it, was, it was a shitty ending i didn't like how he won but whatever miz retained the title I don't know what's going to happen from now on. He got on the mic after and started tripping Dan O'Brien. He's saying that this title win is for you. And oh my God. Just <laughs> he said, stop giving title shots to losers like Dolph Ziggler. Can this stop? If this is not going to end up into a match versus Dolph Ziggler, uh, uh, D- Dan O'Brien versus The Miz, can this just fucking stop already? Like I said it in my Sunday Night Heat. It, it's, it's either going to lead to Daniel O'Brien having a match with Miz or it's going to be getting Daniel O'Brien so pissed off to the point where he just fucking trades Miz to Raw and has, doesn't have to deal with him anymore. Like, it, it, I don't know where they're going with this. Like, they've been doing this for way too long. It is dragging out and it's becoming really stale ass shit that I don't want to see anymore. Especially because they ruined it after the whole pipe bomb thing. Nothing really happened after yeah, that. that was bad. They should have done so much better with that. Now that just, it, it, people literally, I bet you half people have forgotten about that. Because I, I honestly didn't remember until you brought it up just now. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have talked about it. <laughs> and... Now where does Miz go from here with the title? Who does he defend it against? Exactly. You, it's got to be someone credible. And it can't be a heel, so it can't be Baron Corbin. So it can't Corbin. be Cor- Baron Corbin, who deserves the title shot. It could be Apollo Crews, but who knows what the fuck they're doing with him. It looks like they're going to feud him with Kurt Hawkins. That's a fantastic feud. And then you got no one else. I don't, can't think of anyone on top of my head right now. Kalisto, but he just lost to Baron Corbin. doesn't make sense. Um, they really don't have a, a, anyone else in the mid-car yeah. that's a face. I hope they have a plans, or maybe they're just... Now that they see Christmas is around the corner, they're just going to be like, fuck, we can take a creative break and think about this over the holidays. But Maybe we need to make a trade. You still need to make some transition and get into new feuds here. So I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll a call-up. Yeah. 
So move on. Speaking of Baron Corbin, he faced Kalisto in a chairs match, which was actually pretty good. It was better than we expected it to Now, be. after this match, that was match of the night. This was over. This, this drew more expectations. I loved it, and I love my boy Baron Corbin. They made this match look good. And I can say the same about Kalisto. There's a lot of good spots in here. There's the one I remember, the Hurricane Run on the outside, which is pretty cool. Um, deep uh, six by deep Corbin. Deep six on the outside when he caught Kalisto. And then the way he won the match with the end of days on the pile of chairs, which I called halfway through the match. Um, and it was just awesome. It was really, really good and really well yeah, done. Yeah, and Kalisto actually had some near falls in this match too. Yeah, like. so good on them for putting up a good match. I thought this was going to be a snooze fest for Christ's sakes. And I'm like, fuck it, I'm just going to fast forward it and hopefully it's done soon. But I'm really hoping this is the end of the feud. If this, is the, if this is not the end of the feud, I don't know what the fuck they're doing right now. They're no. just playing with their thumbs with this feud. I really hope Corbin goes on to face Ambrose because I, I think Kalisto. that would be... He's good, man. He's <laughs> Kevin Dunn's not on SmackDown. No, I know. Um, but, I I hope, the voice. but I hope Corbin faces Dean Ambrose. I think that would be a good physical feud, and I think yeah. they could do a lot with that. That'd be pretty cool. We'll see. And we'll see what... We don't know what the Dean Ambrose is doing after when we talk about it. Um, before that, talk about a good match here you want to probably talk a lot about in... Uh, Actually, you're not blissed off about it, and we'll talk well, about it. So, Alexa wow. Bliss versus Becky Lynch for the Women's Championship in a tables match. Actually, a pretty decent match. Um, it was. There a was lot, a, couple... a lot of hardcore spots for women. Like, I liked there's it. the. I remember the one spot where Alexa DDT'd Becky, and when the table was flipped upside down, they both landed on that metal edge. Like, shit like that, you've never seen in the women's division, man. It's crazy. Yeah. They're, they're, they're breaking walls, and I love it. It was like they were trying to compete with Raw's no DQ match this week. Yeah, yeah. And now they they blew it out of the water. I'm sorry, they blew it way out of the water with this match. It was so well done. the The spots were yeah, all we, clean. We finally get a long match from the SmackDown women now. Yep. To see um, what they can do. The the only thing I didn't like was when they set up that table in the yeah corner. on the that first no rope. Sense. I'm like, what? And then the way Becky was was trying to do and how to put her through it didn't make any sense. It wouldn't have worked. She would, the, the table literally would just slide down. And I'm like, thank God they didn't actually try that because it wouldn't have fucking worked and it would have looked bad. <laughs> Alexa ended up getting just getting her face yeah. knocked off of it. Yeah, ooh, wow, what a spot. And the table set up on the outside. Um, Alexa, like, flips over Becky and then the way she turns around as she's landing on the, the mat, grabs her in a power, power bomb, bomb. And Bam. power bombs oh, through yeah. the table on the outside. What a way to end a women's table match with a powerbomb on the outside. Not like in the ring or some gay shit like that. But in, on the outside. Like a crazy ass spot like that to end a women's match. It was not weak a at tables all. match for the title. That's that fucking was awesome. That's breaking walls left and right and shit we need to see. And this is why we continue to say the SmackDown women's division is a hundred times better than the Raw one. So it's a division. shit like this right here. Because both the women's matches they had tonight were good. Mm-hmm. Great. Like Awesome and perfect pay per view quality, one hundred percent. All all four of them, like I would say, all four of them did a great job tonight. Mm -hmm. As opposed to we get maybe one match on the yeah. Bras Women's Division, but I mean, congrats to Alexa Bliss. We were just watching it on Talking Smack before we came in here, and she bro broke kayfabe, was crying and saying it was her first time that her parents and had she been in a lot. Her parents. It was the first time her parents were there to see her live. Wow! At a at WWE event. That's so good. What a, yeah, what a moment. So she was bawling, and then afterwards, then she went back to being like Becky. I don't want to know Becky anything. It was fantastic. So, um, yeah, that was just, what a week. I can't believe it. Yeah. Can they finally give her some fucking merch in the shop now? <laughs> yeah, she like, she's the champion now. She doesn't even have a t-shirt. <laughs> How does she not have a shirt? I think she's literally the only dealer right now without a shirt. That's I honestly relevant. think she's the only one without Besides a shirt Fox, right now. but who gives a fuck about Alicia Fox? I think Alicia Fox, I think she's, I think she at least has a Bella shirt in her section. <laughs> God. So her first piece of merch is going to be her plaque that I'm going to have to buy. God. <laughs> So I will definitely be getting one of those, but personally for me, a great week. Both my girls yeah. both winning the titles, so mm -hmm. uh, can't ask for more than that. Mm -hmm. um, going to the main event? Sure. TLC match. AJ Styles versus wow. Dean Ambrose, and wow. Did it, this ever, ever look good? I could not believe it. Um, so many good spots. I can't even think of where to start. Though the one that replays in my head every single time is that 450 splash from AJ Styles. <laughs> from, from the, the top rope, rope to the outside. On a table, through a table. Frick, man. Like, that was just, 
I was just going nuts. We were going absolutely berserk. And then just all oh, throughout the entire the- match, it was just so good. It was so well done. It was what a TLC match should have been. Spot central. A use of all three weapons. Yeah. There's even the, the... The chair spot. Mm-hmm. There's even where Dean Ambrose set the ladder on top of the announce table and elbow dropped uh, AJ Styles through the other announce table. That was a yeah. crazy ass spot. Duh. Usually they only set up the ladder on the outside. No, but he, he put, put it on top. On top make it even top top higher. And then what Holy about the, the chair shit. spot in the ring where the styles like flipped yep. over and he went yep. face first off the chair? Oh yeah, and into the chairs. Fuck, that's just so many good spots in this match. It was incredible. I loved it. And then, um, of course, oh god, and James Ellsworth comes out. Oh my god, We're in here his we neck go. Brace. There we go. And what the hell is gonna happen here? He, and AJ Styles gets pissed off. It looks like he's gonna give him another Styles clash off the steps. I was like, oh no, man, again, I gotta see this shit. It's so like gruesome looking. And then. Ambrose comes in for the save. And dirty deeds onto the yeah. st- onto the steel steps to Styles. Yeah, and they're both on the ladder, and Ambrose kicks Styles off. He rolls out of the ring. Looks like Ambrose is going to win the match. And then fucking Elbridge gets in the ring and pushes Ambrose off the ladder through two tables on the outside. I think it was four tables, actually. God, man. I was just... It, uh, I, think, I think it just looked like four because the way all the tables shattered, it was just like shrapnel everywhere. <laughs> I think there looking... were two set up behind the two that were set oh up so that Ambrose God. like hit them. <laughs> that was nuts. That was such a crazy spot. Like and then, you course, know, it only takes yeah. a guy like Ambrose to be the one to do it too. Yeah, I think he's a nutcase, right? But Ellsworth, fuck. I think th- you can look at this two ways. And I don't know which way to look at it. The one way you can see that maybe Ellsworth just turned heel and he's with Styles now. Or you can look at it as we remember from SmackDown, he told Ambrose he wants Styles to win because his future title match he wants to face Styles again because he knows he can beat him. And he would rather not face Ambrose because he likes Ambrose. So he maybe he did it that way. Maybe he did it to save Ambrose and not to have to face Ambrose. Or, you know, maybe he yeah. turned heel. We don't know. We, we don't, don't know, know yet. That's Smackdown. why. It's kind of a cliffhanger. Mm-hmm. And then you they showed him afterwards like Styles is celebrating. And then you see, like, Ellsworth. He's like, fuck, like, screw yeah. you, Dean. And, like, <laughs> yeah, go, go, Styles. And, like, he's all excited with, like, so an then you look at that and you're like, So is he heel? Or is he just being a, a mark? Or he's just, just joking around? I don't know what the hell he's doing. So, I don't know. I love it. I know he, we always say he shouldn't be in the main title picture. But it that was a good way to, to finally it sense. turn yeah, on just Ambrose. It, it, and it only makes sense because of the history he's had in the main title picture, which we never wanted him there in the first place. But because he has been, okay, I see what they did there. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And, and like, I expected Undertaker to come out after, and he didn't. But whatever, maybe that's going to be in the future. Maybe they'll wait until after the holidays to yeah, set up that feud. Because Dean and, and Styles won't have another rematch. That's it. That was yeah, the rematch. Yeah. So now Styles is probably going to come out and smack down and say, yeah. you know, there's no one else for me to fight. And then dong. And then yeah. there you go. And then Ambrose. Bros, I guess is gonna feud with. If I, I, I hope I hear the dung, but if I hear fucking, dun, 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 I'll be so fucking pissed off. <laughs> hey, maybe Cena fights Miz for the IC title. Oh, please, I would. You know what? <laughs> guess what? I'd actually be okay with that, ladies and gentlemen. Whatever. At least it's not John Cena. Actually, he's not injured. He's just taking fucking time off now. We know he's gonna be hosting Saturday Night Live. So like. I don't want him to come back, and I don't want him to be a Brock Lesnar. I can see that happening. Like, Daniel Bryan bringing back Cena to fight Miz. I love that. You know what? I, I could get behind that, and I'd be oh, semi-okay with that. Cena in the mid-card. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I <laughs> when he was, like, U.S. champ, that was awesome, though. I mean, I have to admit that, that he was a great U.S. champion. He would defend it every yeah. week. Yeah, but now but Cena's, like, ultra part-time now, so... If it would elevate Miz, maybe, but I don't know how you can elevate Miz. All right, he can't go anywhere up from now. He's not going to be a main title pictured superstar he's going to be where he is now and he he's done so much with his career he can't be built up anymore he doesn't need to add anything to his he's in the upper mid card now like he, he's not going to be a legend he's not going to be up there at the rock or cena sorry to say miz he's just going to be a, a legendary mid carder if that makes any sense <laughs> like he's done everything like he's good now he's so like i don't know where he goes from here it, he's got to be starting to tr- transition into that superstar that puts over the new guys so maybe we'll they see. maybe they told him when the brands would happen that you will carry the IC title for a while until yeah. we we find somebody else yeah, so to, someone gets called up or yeah. something or you know or until we give Apollo Cruz a shot yeah but. you know but you know no we'll, we'll make him face Kurt Hawkins because that makes more fucking sense that <laughs> that's great booking right there ultra great I'm gonna I, oh, I can't wait for that feud I'm gonna buy a plaque for that feud no fuck no I'm not buying shit for that crap I'm just not gonna watch it this gonna be straight dumpster fire hot garbage nonsense i'm done (laughs) like i understand 
that Paulo Cruz doesn't have the best mic skills, but at the same time, he's got the physical capabilities, he's got the look, mm-hmm. he's got everything that you yeah. want in a mid card super at least yeah. a mid card superstar. Yeah. And he's not being given that type of opportunity. He's being put in we don't even see him on SmackDown. Yeah. Like he's in like Jack Swagger level right now. Yeah. Like to the part where we don't even see him. Yeah. Um as for the main event, it made sense the sim- the symbolic Ambrose going through the tables as Ellsworth shoves yeah. him over, the guy that helped him through everything. Yeah. I, I liked, liked it. it. You know what? I like TLC. It was good. I mean, again, SmackDown outperforming Raw in, gi- in gimmick pay reviews and, and single pay per views alone. So, this, Roblox got a lot to live up to, man. And it will not live up to that <laughs> at well, all. It was Roman Reigns versus Kevin Owens. Oh, fuck it. That, oh. that, 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 that match right there is going to beat SmackDown. Like, there wasn't a match that I didn't enjoy a little bit in this. Yeah. Like, I'd say the Miz and Ziggler match was probably the worst match on the card. Yeah, and that's sad because it actually was a good match. And you see, you say that because you're th- you're looking at a pay per view and you're like, okay, there's going to be at least one snooze fest match, and it happens a lot with Raw. But this right here, this is a perfect placed yeah. and built SmackDown pay per view from start to finish. Yeah, I guess if you had to say the bottom two matches, I'd say the Carmelo Nikki Bella one wasn't on the same level, yeah, but it was still no, good. It's still good, but it could have been better. Same with the Miz and Ziggler, it was good, but, but could have been better. The other matches, like phenomenal, Great. unreal. Um, every, every single one of them. This was one of my favorite pay-per-views not just because alexa bliss won the title but because this is one of the best pay-per-views i've watched from start to finish that i actually enjoyed mm-hmm. everything I that agree. i watched 100 percent. and because of that i'm giving it an 8 out of 10 rating and it's not perfect because of again as we said nikki bella in the Miz's match the 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 cons out of them i'd say made it go down to an 8 so i'll give it 8 out of 10 i'm gonna give it an i'm gonna give it like an in between 8.5 and 9 so I'm going to give it like an 8.75. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I, I think it was that. a phenomenal pay-per-view. Ooh, to be pun, honest. pun intended? Yep. <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> yes. Everything we, that happened. We love the puns here in the holds bar. Love ev- the pun. Everything that happened made sense. I mean, I went perfect in this pay-per-view. So everything that I wanted yeah, to happen, did. happened. Yeah, you did. And I went for it. <laughs> I went for it too. I'm happy with that score. Everything that I wanted to happen, happened. They actually did it actually, right. Actually, you know what's funny? I went four and two. And the two wrong matches I got were the matches that we thought could have been better. Yeah. <laughs> You picked Ziggler and Carmella. Yeah, I did. <laughs> well, Carmella was biased as fuck. <laughs> and I just wanted Ziggler to win because I hate the Miz. <laughs> so. And, like, the the, the corbin Kalisto match exceeded expectations as yeah, well. Yeah, that was almost match of the night. I know the main event. Uh, main event's match of the night in my books. Um, Styles second best match was Alexa Bliss, Becky Lynch. Then third best was Corbin and Kalisto. And from there, I'd say Wyatt, maybe Wyatt, Ray White. Yep. Yeah, and then Miz. And then, you know, Nikki Bell and Carmella was last, obviously, because it's tough to put them last. But you even all six matches were good. They were good. It wasn't like they were losers. They were just... No. That, that it wasn't been... like a snooze fest, like if it was Golden Truth versus Shining Star, because I wouldn't give a fuck about that match. That'd be zero out of ten in my books. The Nikki Bella Carmella match probably would have been like the second or third best match on a Raw, on a raw pay-per-view. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. how bad Raw is. Yeah. We got Roadblock coming up. Knock- uh, end of the line. Hopefully it's the end of the Raw nonsense. Fuck, man. <laughs> At least the end and then, of the Roman Reigns push. And we got to give props to SmackDown, too. I mean, I know they started a little bit before Survivor Series, but realistically, they had two weeks to, to build, build for a this pay per view. Like, matches for this pay per view. Literally only had two weeks. And it feels like they didn't put a lot out there, but they put enough to make these matches look good at TLC. Maybe the build up wasn't as good for some yeah. certain feuds, but they delivered tonight. And you know what's hilarious? Ross had so, all this time, and they've done fuck all to build for Roadblock. It doesn't even feel like they should be even doing this roadblock pay per view right now because all they have in place right now is Kevin Owens versus and Roman Reigns. That's I think that's the only booked match, and it's two weeks away. How the fuck? So basically, they're doing the same thing. They're only going to have two weeks to build the other matches, and it's a three hour show. <laughs> For and, and they get two extra weeks than weeks than SmackDown did. Oh, to no build, excuse. No to build. excuse. Ross sucks. <laughs> Raw is terrible. Yeah. Um. So now, where do we go from here for SmackDown? Because they've got like six weeks before Royal Rumble, Rumble now. And you know what? Half the people, if not eighty percent of SmackDown, will be in the Royal Rumble. Like I, the Royal Rumble match is going to be the main event. I'm I'm guessing at Royal Rumble because Brock Lesnar and Goldberg are in it. So that's yeah. going to be the main event. We hope to God Styles and Taker happens. Yeah. There's probably going to be four or five other matches, and it'll be Styles Taker. Uh, there'll be the universal title will be on the line. 
Um, tag team titles. Maybe one of the tag team titles, maybe one of the women's, and then there'll be a, uh, a kickoff match. I w- that's it. Maybe a, a smaller women's Royal Rumble would it's, be cool. It's just going to be interesting because it's only going to be 30 man, and it's going to be a five-hour pay-per-view or four-hour pay-per-view, and it's in a 60,000-seat arena. So Vince wants this to sell. He wants everyone to watch it, to buy the network, and he wants to sell out that pay-per-view. So he's going to so. want the lower matches to be good as well. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. M- May- is Cena back at this point? Will he be know. back for the Rumble? Who knows? <laughs> Who fucking knows? That's why not, I think... As long as he's in it, he just doesn't win it. He doesn't need to win it anymore. Don't I heard that win the Rumble. I heard he was one of the favorites with Chris Jericho to win it. What the fuck does John Cena need to win the Royal Rumble for? He's won it like eight times already. <laughs> if if we're going to go off predictions about what should happen, Styles versus Taker should happen at Royal Rumble. Taker wins the title from Styles. Cena goes on to Elimination Chamber, wins the Chamber, and yeah. then faces Taker at WrestleMania okay, for the yeah. title. Don't win the Royal Rumble. No. Because that's bullshit. No. Win, win the so chamber. Whoever's going to win the Rumble, it's got to be a Raw superstar, and they got a challenge for the Universal title at... And I pray to God Finn Balor is healthy enough back then to actually win the Royal Rumble and have Finn Balor win the Royal Rumble. I'd be okay with Finn Balor winning the Royal Rumble. That's probably it's going to be, be a Raw guy. You know it's going to be if a Raw If Finn guy. Balor's back, I'm picking Finn Balor. But... If not, Sami Zayn. <laughs> if he doesn't get traded. But Raw... It, it all depends... We don't even know if Elimination Chamber... Yeah. If it's even coming back, or yeah. if it's even well, gonna apparently be... it is because the arenas advertised for it, but they haven't advertised what brand it is. Yeah. So Fastlane and Elimination Chamber are the two pay per views going into before WrestleMania, but we don't know which brand has which. They're saying that SmackDown has Elimination Chamber and Raw has Fastlane right now. That's the current rumor. So that makes sense then, because then yeah. Raw's going to win the Royal Rumble yeah. and SmackDown's going to win the Elimination yeah. Chamber. There you go. And that's going to be it. So yeah. other than that. I don't know what SmackDown does for six weeks, but I mean, yeah. <laughs> like we said before, they can take some like a couple weeks off during Christmas. Yeah, like, we know there's going to be okay the tribute to the troops episode. There's going to be the Christmas one. There's going to be the New Year's one, and then there'll be the three weeks leading into the Royal Rumble. So SmackDown now gets to take a break after this great pay per view. Basically, yeah, they're probably going to take a couple weeks off. So yeah. everyone chill. If SmackDown yeah, has a couple relax. bad don't, weeks, don't tweet us like, "Oh, SmackDown's been shit." What the fuck happened, guys? We just told we're telling you right now it's going to fucking happen. Don't bitch at us because you know SmackDown is going to be shit. It's going to be shit. We're warning After you right now. After what they did tonight, I don't care. Me and Corporate Cappy here are expecting the worst. And you know what? You know, we won't be okay with it. Um, we'll be like, okay, that's fine. We'll just watch 205 Live. Yeah. <laughs> that's we'll it. We'll just skip SmackDown. Yeah, we'll just watch 205 Live. I mean, we're going to skip Raw anyway, but. <laughs> <laughs> God. And we're, we're replacing the Lowdown Show with the Slammies, the Slammies in a couple weeks week, anyway. Yeah, we'll, so. fi- we'll, we'll figure out what week and we'll let you guys know. Yep. But. I think that's going to wrap it up there, uh, Cobra Cappy. Yep, I think that, so too. That was actually a good, good pay-per-view. Very good. Very good. Props to SmackDown. Yep, the blue brand. <laughs> the blue brand. Just can't wait for that Alexa Bliss mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. plaque to come out. Or sure. <laughs> Who, has there ever been a superstar that had their first merch being a plaque of their championship? Wait, I wonder if there's <laughs> ever been a superstar to win a title without a t-shirt. <laughs> let us know. If you guys know, let us know if there's ever been a WWE superstar to win a title and get a t-shirt in, you know, the t-shirt era. The t-shirt era hasn't been big back then. We're in, like, the last four or five years has been the t-shirt era, basically. And after the title. We're not talking about, like, right before, like, he Slater no, got one. No, like, after. Like, they won the title, but they didn't have a t-shirt winning the title. No. So you can't go as back as Centino Morella. Can't go that far back. I'm going to say 2010 till now. It's the last six years. Let us know if you know. But, other than that, guys, that's going to wrap it up. For the review for TLC 2016 on the Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, we are your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses about the WWE and the Holds Barred on anything we say. Be sure to check out the Lowdown Show every week on the podcast where we discuss Monday Night Raw, Tuesday Night Smackdown, as well as the Sunday Night Heat from yesterday, or actually today, uh, where myself, Kyle Masters, rant and discuss training topic in the WWE, and today we did roster trades. Remember, you can follow the podcast on Twitter and join in the conversation by tweeting at Noel's Bar WP, as well as listen to all previous episodes on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, and Spreaker. As always, I'm your self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and always continue to be joined by my corporate co-host, the blissful boss champion, corporate double champion, champion double undisputed. Champion. He knew the Ric Flair slap. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! As always, guys, we'll see you next time.